Today, we are going to talk about all things nutrition challenges. I've had the pleasure to talk to many gym owners over the past, gosh, 15 years, and nutrition challenges are pretty common for most of us. I will say that I've run many challenges over the past, gosh, almost 20 years. I started in private practice with nutrition in 2005, and we were running challenges back then. I will tell you, I made a lot of mistakes, and the goal of today is to teach you how to avoid some of the mistakes that we've made and really leverage a challenge to avoid what I call the challenge trap. I actually wrote about this for our CrossFit affiliates that uh, are OGs that know about the CrossFit Journal. I wrote about this in 2017. Uh, the challenge trap is where you run nutrition challenges very regularly and people do really good during a challenge, but then they fall off after a challenge is over and then they're just waiting for the next challenge to get back on track. And it's this like vicious yo-yo cycle that we definitely don't mean to put people into, but it kind of happens because the way we set up challenges. And I will tell you that we have avoided a lot of those mistakes, I would say over the past um, you know, eight years, we really refined this process to not only run challenges in our gyms, but also go into this picture on the screen here is a challenge that I ran at our church. There were 300 people that did this nutrition challenges. We also take the challenge framework and go into companies. So you can think of a challenge you want to get your feet wet in your gym, but you can take the same framework and do it at different companies to expand your reach, uh, expand your impact with beyond people that are just in inside the four walls of your gym, while also adding revenue too. Uh, just so you guys have a little bit of background, Sarah introduced me, but my name is obviously Nicole Acoin. I am the founder of Healthy Steps Nutrition. My journey becoming a gym owner is actually backwards compared to most. I started as a clinical dietitian in a hospital and realized how broken the healthcare system was and realized I wasn't going to be able to do something that would truly fulfill me and help people prevent and reverse chronic disease in the traditional healthcare. I call it in quotes, healthcare is really more like sick, sick care in that system. So started Healthy Steps Nutrition in 2012, and we expanded into our gym in 2016. This picture is actually from the CrossFit Games last year or the year before. And some of these people in the picture actually started with a nutrition challenge at a gym through Healthy Steps Nutrition. I'm going to teach you this framework. But they continued with nutrition coaching long after the challenge was over, and they were able to see amazing results blood work improving by 30%, losing over 100 pounds. And the truth is it was because there was that framework that's guided, tested, and proven. And I'm going to teach you that today. So what do we want to start with? If you guys are uh, CrossFit affiliates, you've probably seen this fitness pyramid before that has foundation on the bottom. But I would venture to say that there are some missing pieces of the puzzle when it comes to a holistic approach when we're addressing the other 23 hours of the day outside of the gym. We have to talk about mindset, what's going on between the ears, and we also need to address sleep and support system. Why do I bring this up now? When you're thinking about creating a challenge and creating a challenge experience, we want it to look like a holistic approach. We don't want to have something that's super restrictive. We want to help people come, become a better version of themselves and really look at that holistic framework. So that's what we have at Healthy Steps Nutrition, a holistic framework. And hopefully you can understand by looking at this wheel that all of these factors are going to influence nutrition decisions. When you have a nutrition program broader than just a challenge, you want to address all of these factors because if we're not addressing stress with clients, Likely they're going to have stress at some point in their life. And if they're using nutrition and food to comfort themselves, we're never going to reach our health and wellness goals. If we're not sleeping at least seven to eight hours a night, our ghrelin levels are going to be elevated. We're going to be more hungry. Our cortisol levels are going to be elevated. We're going to be more stressed, which is going to cause us to eat more. And we're going to be less satisfied. We're not going to be able to meet our nutrition goals because our hormones are out of whack. We also need to look at environment. And for a lot of our clients, their environment is not setting them up to make the healthy choice the easy choice. I want you to think about that. 
if their environment is not setting them up to make the healthy choice, the easy choice, there's going to be a lot of barriers that they're going to have to navigate over and over again, a lot of distractions, and it's going to make it hard for them to stay on track. So we have to, when we're thinking about a nutrition coaching program, we have to address these other pillars. And when we do bigger picture, not just in a challenge, but in an ongoing coaching program, our length of engagement with clients goes up. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, our average length of engagement for a nutrition client is 18 months. They're in our nutrition program for 18 months on average. That's way better than a 28-day or 60-day challenge. And I would recommend doing a 28-day challenge as a group environment and group kickstart and then move people to ongoing coaching. Now, when you think about a nutrition coaching program and you think about a nutrition challenge, we need to have some core values around nutrition. We need to be aligned as a staff with our nutrition philosophy. If you're unsure of what your nutrition philosophy is, I'm gonna talk about ours for a minute. You can feel free to to take this and run with it. Uh, I will say that this isn't exactly what I learned in school um, to become a dietitian. This is a lot of trial and error and figuring out what works and what doesn't, and we have to keep it simple. I believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated and the world overcomplicates things and it makes people confused and they don't know what diet is right for them, but we really just need to go back to the basics. Focusing on whole foods first. Eat meats and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, minimal added sugar. Let's start by just adding more whole foods in. It could look like something as simple as the plate method. We want to teach our clients about balance of macronutrients, pairing protein, carbs, and fats, and what that looks like. And then we need to address the elephant in the room. One of the leading causes of chronic disease today is the overconsumption of processed carbohydrates and refined sugar. And we need to teach people what they're eating and help them understand how to read nutrition facts labels. This isn't just for a challenge. If you want your members at your gym to make nutrition a priority, we need to talk about nutrition consistently. We need to help them connect the dots between what they eat and how they feel, how they're recovering, how their body composition is changing. I'm sure you have people in your gym, if you're a coach, uh, have people in your gym that look maybe similar to to the same way that they did when they started a few years ago. Why, if they're working out so hard, why aren't they seeing the results that they want? It's because we haven't addressed the other 23 hours of the day. So I wanted to set the groundwork there with big picture with nutrition. But today, what we're going to talk about is how to increase engagement, signups with the nutrition challenge, how to position it, how to avoid that challenge trap that I've been talking about for a long time, because I don't want people to fall into this vicious cycle. I want to you to think about a challenge as a springboard to help someone with their health and wellness journey, not the hamster wheel keep going round and round. So let's talk about the steps to get started. The first thing we need to think about is understanding where does a nutrition challenge fit in into your client journey? If I were to say, how do I get started at your gym? I'm sure you can confidently tell me. Now, If I were to ask you, how do I get started with your nutrition coaching program? Would you be able to have that same level of confidence? Would your staff be able to have that same level of confidence? Your challenge is your foundations program for nutrition. We teach the fundamentals. We teach the basics. And then individual coaching is really where the magic happens to help people reach their health and wellness goals. And it's important that we have the right amount of time for a foundations program in regards to nutrition and in regards to how long is a nutrition challenge. I made a lot of mistakes with this specific piece of the puzzle, um, doing challenges for way too long and then people didn't stay engaged versus um, having a good time where you use that as a springboard for ongoing coaching. So let's look at what your nutrition coaching offerings are. When I started Healthy Steps Nutrition, I had something called a power hour where I'd sit someone down for an hour and basically be a fire hose of information. People were so overwhelmed and the truth is they didn't really take action because there was no accountability. Nutrition coaching, the value of that, what people are really paying for is accountability and support. They can look up meal plans and all these different things online, but your value as a coach is keeping them accountable. Are you doing the things that you said you were going to do? So how do we build accountability into a nutrition coaching program? 
Well, I would recommend that you have two paths to an ongoing coaching membership similar to your gym membership. A nutrition challenge, great way to kickstart a program, and then an individual coaching program. I strongly encourage people one way to avoid the challenge trap is not run too many challenges every single year. We recommend one to two challenges a year in house and then go to companies and do employee wellness. Get outside of your gym for additional challenges and impact. Um, But running one to two challenges a year, the next question usually is when should you run them? I would recommend running them in the new year, about two to three weeks after kids go back to school. And then in the fall, two to three weeks after kids go back to school, a popular start date with HSN mentoring clients and people doing the challenge intensive that we built out through SugarWad is September 9th is going to be a popular start date for gyms to launch nutrition challenges. Get the summer over, get kids back in school, and then parents can focus on themselves and their habits to get back into a good routine. So if we're not running challenges all the time, how do we get people enrolled in our nutrition coaching program? Individual nutrition coaching is key. So how much do we charge for this? Average gym charges around 179 to 229 per month for three months for individual coaching. The average gym for ongoing nutrition coaching, 129 to 159. Uh, for ongoing nutrition coaching. Once we have that ongoing coaching rate, that membership rate after the first three months for individual coaching, ongoing coaching rate, we need to charge more than that for a nutrition challenge. So if your ongoing coaching rate for nutrition is 159, that's what it is at our gym, at, at our CrossFit gym, it's 159 per month for nutrition coaching, build every four weeks actually. Our nutrition challenge is going to be 179 or 189. We're going to charge more for a nutrition challenge to move people right into our ongoing coaching rate. The next question usually comes is how much, if I'm an owner, how much do I pay my coach? What are best practices there? And how much time is it going to take? If you follow the framework with Healthy Steps Nutrition, our 28-day nutrition challenge is about an hour per person. We recommend meeting people for 20 minutes at the beginning and at the end of the challenge. And then we have about an hour per week total as group support. And that is going to be it. So if you have a challenge with 30 people, it's going to be about 35 hours of work for you. Now, if you're charging 169 for your nutrition challenge, typically gyms are paying around 45 to 50% of revenue going to the nutrition coach. If you're charging 169 and you have 30 people signed up, that is going to bring in over $5,000. You're paying your coach around 20 to 100, and then your gym is profiting over $2,700. When you set a nutrition program up right, or nutrition challenge up right, where you're talking about what happens after the challenge, at the beginning of the challenge, people will move into ongoing coaching. When we set up a challenge that is not like a conveyor belt that I'll talk about in a few minutes where they know exactly what they need to do next, they're going to take that next step. It's kind of like if you have a foundations program for your gym, you're not going to have people do foundations and then go to the 24-hour access to do your style of coaching out at that 24-hour access gym. No, they're going to move into those group classes, which is the next steady progression there. So 50% conversion to ongoing coaching is super realistic. If you have a small gym and you're like, Nicole, 30 people seems like a lot for a nutrition challenge. What should I do? Well, then I would open it up to the public. Give your members a week to sign up for the challenge and then start advertising. Hey, we only have 30 spots available. You do not have to be a member of our gym to join this nutrition challenge. You could reach out to people who maybe have opted into your email list and see if they want to get started with nutrition instead of fitness. Other people I would look at are friends, family members, coworkers of your gym who might not be interested in the fitness side, but would be interested in nutrition coaching. So lots of opportunity there to meet the goals that you have. Now, if you have multiple nutrition coaches doing a nutrition challenge, and we're recommending that you meet people for 20 minutes at the beginning and at the end of the challenge, You need to assign people as they enroll to the coach that's going to be working with them. If you have multiple coaches, 
We need to make sure that we're really clear with the client journey and that we're all delivering a similar experience for the nutrition coaching program. This is just to give you an idea of how much revenue. I think it's really important as you're thinking about who might help support this role or how much money you can bring in, that you have a clear idea of what this could and would look like. Now, the next thing after we figure out the client journey and we know that a challenge is the kickstart of someone's journey with you and they're going to move into ongoing coaching, we need to think about what is the experience that we want to have when someone signs up. Right from right when they sign up to the ending point of the challenge, what does that experience look like? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have made this mistake too many times. The conveyor belt method. Maybe this sounds familiar. You're running a nutrition challenge. Today's the kickoff day. Let's pretend it's a Saturday. It's the kickoff day for the challenge. It it officially starts on Monday. And we need to do people's biometrics. We need to test their biometrics. And we just say, come in between 8 and 12 to do the biometric testing. And we're going to have a kickoff seminar at 12. Here's what happens. Everyone comes at 1130 and then you're frantically trying to get through everybody and you're stressed out and it's not a good experience for them because they're waiting. We want to avoid that by having people book individual meetings. And when someone signs up the week before the challenge, you have time slots for people to book in for those individual meetings. And then we come together for a group um, kickoff seminar. Think of it For you guys in the U.S., think of it as like a pep rally. Get everyone super excited, understanding what they need to do, getting them engaging and communicating with each other. We want to make sure that we're really clear when we're talking about a professional experience. What does it include? You need to know this and your your staff needs to know this. We all need to be speaking the same language. A lot of people tell me, you know, we have a lot of informal conversations about nutrition, but we're not really charging for nutrition, or we do the conveyor belt method, what should we be doing? Individual meetings are the secret sauce to converting people from a challenge to ongoing coaching. We want to talk about our short-term and more importantly, our long-term goals. If you were to invest your time, energy, resources into your health, your wellness, your nutrition, six months from now, what does success look like for you? Then we break it down. All right. That is amazing. Now I know our North Store, why it's important to you. Now let's talk about what's realistic for you to accomplish during the first 28 days together. And then that'll be our first milestone towards that long-term goal of whatever they are looking to do. Now, when we talk about those individual meetings, you need some things like meeting templates so that those meetings are run consistently so we don't forget an important piece with every single person that we're doing those meetings with. So what does a professional experience look like for a nutrition coaching program? We recommend those initial meetings, the ending meetings. We like to have some professional resources so it's not just a conversation, something like a handbook for people to walk away with. A kickoff seminar, that's going to be your pep rally. We need the ability to track habits and consistency so that the coach can see, is this challenge participant doing the things? And so that we can pick a weekly mini challenge winner. We love to do mini challenges instead of one big challenge winner at the end to keep people engaged. We'll talk about more engagement strategies in a minute. But we want to have some professional resources something to walk away with so you're not they're not frantically writing on a piece of paper or they're not writing anything at all and they don't have anything to reference back to. We want to be able to have some value between the in-person visits and we need some meeting templates. And this is really, really important if you have multiple nutrition coaches delivering a nutrition challenge and even individual coaching program. We want to have the expectations, and it's not meant to be used as a checklist, more of a guide to make sure that we're covering all of our bases and we have a full holistic approach of where a client is at, what they're wanting, and how we can best serve them. If you're thinking, Nicole, this is a lot of stuff. Honestly, that's why we made the HSN and SugarWatt integration. Everything is done for you with this challenge intensive and the integration in SugarWatt where there's daily videos talking about nutrition, stress management, sleep mindset. There's habit tracking in there. 
There's a leaderboard in there. So the person that's checking off all the habits is going to be at the top of the leaderboard to help you pick who is the most engaged. All right. So we know that we need to be delivering a professional experience. What does that look like for you? For us, when we're talking about a challenge, we're fo focusing on four pillars of health. Nutrition. And this nutrition habit layers onto each other every single week. We're talking about daily movement, 30 minutes of daily movement every single day. Most people, the days that they're not coming into the gym to see you are probably pretty sedentary. Maybe you've got the outliers who are have a really active job, but a lot of people are sitting like we are um, at a desk. More and more people are getting the, the walking treadmills that you can put under your desk, which is awesome. But if they don't have that. They're probably not getting the amount of steps in, exercise their heart rate up, and we need to get people moving. So daily movement, sleep is another big thing, and then mindset. How are we focusing on positive affirmations, mindful minutes? These four pillars are, are vital to helping someone with achieving the healthiest version of themselves. So in the sugar water integration, we're tracking those four habits. We have those daily videos for you already ready to go. Next thing you want to think about. So we know that where the, cha the challenge is. We know what we want to deliver, what we want to have in our challenge. The next thing we need to think about is how are we going to get signups for our challenge and how are we going to have good engagement? So lots of things to think about here. I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, I thought when I opened my gym, I was it was going to be like a light switch. I would I would launch a program, I would do a thing, I would talk about it, it would sell out immediately. In reality, people need to hear things many times. Research shows at least fifteen times before they take action. And if we don't have consistent marketing, if we're not talking about something soon enough, people are be like, "Man, I didn't even hear about it. Oh, I waited till the last minute. I'll just wait for the next one." Instead, what we want to do is have a clear marketing strategy where we are getting our staff on board and we have a physical sign up board. This is a really key one. The next time you, you run a nutrition challenge, have a physical sign up board. Whenever someone signs up online or mentions they want to do it in class, write their name on the board. Leave the follow up on you as a coach or the owner, whoever's delivering the nutrition challenge to follow up with them, charge their account, and get them enrolled in the challenge and booked in for that initial meeting. Recommend launching challenge marketing six weeks out and then advertising how many, how many spots do you have open and available. Most gyms that we talk to set a goal of 30 to 50 people to, to join their nutrition challenge. It really comes down to how many people can you manage. Can you handle a busy week leading up to the, to the challenge? If we have 30 people doing a nutrition challenge and I am the only one doing it, it's going to be about 15 hours the week leading up to the challenge of me doing individual appointments because it's about a 20-minute appointment, 10-minute buffer. So we want to make sure that we're marketing. We want to be highlighting the benefits. What is someone going to get out of this challenge? Especially if you run different challenges in the past, we want to make sure that we're marketing how someone is going to benefit what is included. We want to make sure if we have a small gym, we're marketing this challenge outside of just our gym membership. If we've got a big gym, open it up to your members first and then open it up to non-members if you still have a few spots left. Now, what I will tell you, this is a is something that gym owners miss out on. And I think we get so busy. We just send out communication and we miss this vital piece of the puzzle. And I'm going to explain it to you through a story. If I am a gym owner, let's pretend um, I am, I'm the owner of your gym and I'm super excited about this challenge that I've been planning, but I don't communicate it with my staff. I don't get them excited about it. I don't tell them what's included. It's not that they wouldn't be a part of it. They just don't know anything because I skipped a really vital step in communicating with them. And I decided to just send out an email blast. We're so excited to be launching this challenge. Here's the link to sign up. It's $179. We're opening up 30 spots. I might get a couple people signed up right away, but most people are going to go into the gym the next time and they're going to ask the coach, what's the deal, Sarah, with this nutrition challenge? What's going on with it? And if my coaches don't know and they say, I don't know, you need to go talk to Nicole, that's going to kill the buzz with the nutrition challenge. People are going to be like, mm, 
Maybe it's not as good as I thought it would be. The coaches don't even know. Versus me getting the staff on board and they're super excited. They're going to do it. Awesome. And they say, you know what? We're all doing it. Here's what it includes. Here's you better lock in your spot. Once you lock it in there, you're going to get an initial appointment. It's going to be such an awesome thing because we're not just focusing on nutrition. Although we will be talking about nutrition. We're looking at sleep, stress management. We're just going to do this together, focusing on healthy habits to, to all get healthier one step at a time. It's going to change the momentum. So we need to get our staff on board. This goes is a vital part in talking to your, your staff with a larger challenge launch too. So if you're planning to launch a challenge to kickstart an ongoing coaching program, your staff needs to know about it. They need to know when you're planning on doing it. If you're changing up your nutrition program and you guys have done like um, macros before or something 75 hard before and you're doing this habit-based approach, your staff needs to understand why, or maybe you didn't charge for challenges before and now you are, and your staff needs to be equipped with why are you challenge, why are you charging now? What's the value that someone's going to get? We need to equip our staff so that they feel confident talking about what you are doing. This is like a bigger business strategy, but you really, really need staff buying. I've seen huge gyms, 300 plus people not be super successful with launching a nutrition program because of this piece. And I've seen really small gyms have a amazingly successful nutrition program because they had good staff buy-in. So what should you do? You as an owner need to be bought into your challenge too. So if you're not running it, if you have a coach, you better be the first person to sign up and be talking about it. You're the leader of your tribe. You need to know what's going on. If you offer a nutrition coaching program now and you're a gym owner and you don't know what's included in the benefits and if it's being delivered at the level of, of professionalism that you want, sign up as a client and see, audit the program. Is it is it what you're wanting for your members? And I say this, you might be thinking, Nicole, that's crazy. Why would you even say that? Because so many times after I get done speaking at CrossFit summits or the games or other events, owners will come up to me and say, Nicole, if I'm honest, I don't, we offer nutrition, but I don't know what my nutrition coach does. I know that people are seeing some results, but I don't know what they're doing. Or maybe they outsource nutrition and they're like, I have no clue what they do. They have no control. You need to make sure that if you're putting your name and your brand next to something that it is delivered at the level of professionalism that you're expecting and wanting that your members deserve. So there's my, my tangent there. Uh, physical sign up board. This is such a silly thing, but so key. People have FOMO if they see everyone else doing it and they're not doing it. Uh, make sure that when you guys are announcing a challenge in class, if you're interested, write your name up and the coach will follow up with you. Don't erase names after you get them signed up. We want more names on the board and say you have 30 challenge spots open and there's 30 names um, slots and you fill them up and then you can say only five spots left that sense of urgency is going to get people to sign up. Putting the link to sign up in the Sugar Wad announcements, this is super easy. Um, at the end of this, we're actually going to give you some guys some different ideas to integrate nutrition overall into your Sugar Wad account. Uh, but make sure that you're reaching out to past members and people on your email list with a simple link to sign up for your nutrition challenge. All right, let's talk about engagement with the challenge. It really starts engagement with your nutrition challenge. It starts with the owner, the leadership team, the staff of the challenge, and then doing this awesome kickoff seminar. We recommend it be in person, make it fun and entertaining, get people connecting. I love giving out prizes um, even during the kickoff seminar. So one of the things that we'll do is we'll run a little promo. Hey, if you get a friend, family member, a coworker to sign up. You're going to be in a raffle that we're going to give away um, during the kickoff seminar. So that gets people. We know that if, if I sign up for a challenge and my spouse does the challenge too, the likelihood of us being more successful because we're doing it together is exponential. So you're only going to help the person that originally signs up and the byproduct, the person that they get and recruit to join with them. Um, but another good strategy is to Make the, the metric that we want to track based on engagement, not just results. So I don't want someone fasting for the last week of the challenge and have the most lost body weight. We're not doing a biggest loser challenge. We're looking at engagement. Similar to the gym, when you look at the metrics of what 
What causes people to keep their gym memberships? How do you significantly decrease the turn rate of your gym membership? It's check-in metrics. When people are checking in 13 plus times a month, they're more likely to stick with the gym. If you're doing a metric based on consistency and participation, like consistency of checking off habits, going into a leaderboard, then we're promoting consistency. That's what that's what we want. Consistency is the driver of results. And then we can take that paired with engagement in a group feature in however you are doing it. A lot of people that use the SugarWatt integration will do a Facebook group. Uh, we'll do a engagement feature where we're having people do little mini challenges, um, uh, share healthy recipes, share a picture of your plate, share a picture of you eating out. And it looks like the plate method. The last week, write this down. The last week of your challenge, have everyone give you a Google review. Give them something, some small something. Maybe it's a $10 credit for your uh, swag store, whatever the case may be that says, how has nutrition, fitness, and accountability helped you? If you want to grow a nutrition program after a gym, you need Google reviews that say nutrition. This is an easy way to get a lot of Google reviews that say nutrition. Um, this was a kickoff seminar that we did at a construction company with over 150 people. So much fun. The cool thing about this story is these people never have stepped foot inside of our gym. They don't even live in our city. We went up and did the, the initial appointments, the challenge kickoff. We did the ending appointments in person. The rest was done completely virtually, and you could do it through the SugarWatt integration. The guy in the background in this picture, um, his name is Josh. He lost over 100 pounds between when we initially launched a challenge with that company in 2018 to going back in there in 2021. They, he lost 100 pounds. His CEO is sitting two spots over from him. They really just changed the culture of this construction company. You might not think like construction workers, nutrition, health. They This company is absolutely amazing. They encourage each other. Just the culture completely changed. And I, as a dietitian that, that worked in the hospital, like these people are at most risk for chronic disease because of their habits, because of their lifestyle. And because Mike, the, the founder, the CEO had us come in, like we changed the trajectory for them and, and you can do this same thing, which is really, really cool. Uh, all right. So let's go back to engagement. Starts with you as a, a staff member and an owner sharing recipes, engaging in the chat, do little meek, mini weekly challenges based on participation. And again, the consistency, which is easy to see through the sugar wad leaderboard at the beginning uh, you want to book the ending meeting. This is a big mistake a lot of people make. You don't want to be hounding people at the end to try to get them to book in for a final meeting. Book the ending meeting at the beginning meeting. It will save you so many headaches. What's realistic for a conversion? 50% conversion to ongoing coaching is super realistic in a gym setting. So if you have 30 people joining a challenge, 15 of them, if you're following the systems and we specifically give you exactly what you need to do in the challenge intensive with scripts, converting at least 50% of those people to ongoing coaching is super realistic. How? Run the initial meeting. Make sure that you're talking about what happens long-term and short-term goal. Then the ending meeting, what went awesome? What were the barriers? How can we continue to help you moving forward and make it easy for someone to upgrade their membership, add on a nutrition coaching membership. Now we keep for logistically in like member management software, we keep the nutrition coaching membership separate from the fitness coaching membership. Because if my challenge starts September 9th and it wraps up July or September, October um, 2nd, then their membership for nutrition coaching is going to start whenever that final meeting is. So if it's not the same day that the gym membership is, it's going to be weird. We want to just um, start it when the nutrition coaching challenge is during that final meeting, upgrade their membership right away. New member sign up. So you now you have the pass for nutrition coaching. You've got individual coaching, and then you've got a nutrition challenge. The way I see it is you have three buckets of people for nutrition in your gym. You've got your existing members, You've got people on your email list, past members, friends, family members, coworkers. 
basically your ecosystem that's connected to you that might not be ready for fitness or maybe your gym is too far away or not convenient, but they would be interested in nutrition only coaching. Great. Set up a, a membership for that. But then long term, the best way to grow a nutrition program, and we've helped over 5,000 gym owners and coaches at this point, trained them through the CrossFit Preferred Nutrition course that I wrote and the partnership we have with CrossFit. We've trained thousands of gym owners and coaches the best way to grow a nutrition program in a gym that have a solid front end offer that encompasses nutrition, fitness, and accountability. Have Google reviews, have your messaging, make nutrition present, make it overly obvious that you offer nutrition and you transform health. Not that you're a fitness coaching program that might have nutrition on the side. If you keep nutrition forward, people expect nutrition to be a part of the conversation, and then they're going to come to you for that help. So big picture with nutrition challenges, we need to know where the challenge is, right? A kickstart, a springboard to going into an ongoing coaching program. We want to make sure that we're delivering a professional experience here. Your nutrition challenge is your first impression for a lot of people. Better be a good one if you want people to continue to work with you after a challenge is over. And then we want to make sure that we have a good plan, have a sign-up goal, and make sure that our, our staff knows that sign-up goal and they're, they're bought into the process. Having your staff be a part of a challenge is a really good way to make sure that they know what they are, are doing. Um, and know what the benefits are for your nutrition challenge. All right, let's take a pause from challenges and we're going to talk about bigger picture, how to integrate nutrition uh, with your sugar watt account and just how do you prioritize nutrition in general. So lots of things that you can do for nutrition. Um, one of the things that you can do is share healthy recipes. In the announcements, you can also, as you're onboarding new people, one of the things, if you have an on-ramp program, we have people uh, do an on-ramp program where there's three personal training sessions. And part of the personal training programming is something about nutrition. So we talk about the plate method first. We talk about balancing your macronutrients and what you should have before your workout. We talk about hydration and sh sugar-sweetened beverages and excess sugar intake we talk about protein and how to prioritize protein. We have it all laid out in SugarWad as part of the programming so that they can see it. Asking nutrition questions of the day is an easy thing to do. And then also share testimonials. The number one thing that drives business, number one thing that drives business is testimonials and client successes and Google reviews. We collectively as gym owners don't do a good enough job sharing the amazing things that are happening inside of our gym. And we need people to say we are as good as we say we are. We need people to say we are as good as we say we are. We can't say, we could say, yep, we can help you absolutely. But don't you think it is way more powerful to look at Google reviews and say, 329 Google reviews that say, you know, this program is simple. It's comprehensive. They're unmatched professionalism. This is what gym owners are saying about, about our program. What are co clients saying about your new fitness program? If you offer a nutrition program, what are they saying about your nutrition program? We need to share those success stories. You can share them through screenshots of Google reviews. You can also do testimonial videos, which is a really good thing too. We want to also think about how is nutrition physically present inside of our gyms. This is um, pictures of literally what you will see when you walk inside CrossFit HSN and Healthy Steps Nutrition HQ, a giant fitness pyramid. People ask me all the time, Nicole, where did you get that? Uh, my husband and I got on a... Um, like whatever the extension thing and put a projector and put it on the wall and hand painted that thing. Um, he is pretty OCD. So he did a really good job. I just filled in the gaps, but we painted that is not a sticker. Uh, what was a little bit easier were things like the mixed tiles and the success stories that neon sign that says health starts here. I believe that to my core, a hundred percent conviction health starts inside of our gym because I've been on the other side of healthcare. I worked in the hospital. I worked in doctor's offices and saw the revolving door that it's not, the system isn't set up for preventative medicine. It's, it's reactive. People are just getting more and more medications that have complications and they're not really, the system isn't set up to provide the lifestyle intervention that people need. And we are positioned as gym owners and coaches to help them 
with not only the hour of the day with good movement and building strength and muscle, which is so important, but also addressing the other 23 hours of the day. But if you don't make nutrition a priority in your messaging, your members are not going to make nutrition a priority. So that's from a physical standpoint. But then from an online standpoint, we can help prioritize nutrition there too. And it takes consistency, um, but things like sharing healthy recipes, sharing nutrition tips, answer the most common questions that you get asked. How much protein should I have? What should I have around my workout? Doing virtual nutrition seminars are a really great strategy to capture new leads, call people to action and get them to sign up for your program. Lots of different things that you can do. We actually give you all of the marketing for a nutrition challenge in the challenge intensive, that partnership we have with SugarWad. Make sure that you put your um, questions in the chat. I'm going to give you guys some more um, free help that we have, and then I'm going to shift gears to answering any questions that you guys have. Um, there are two podcasts that we offer. One is nutrition made simple. This is like a client facing podcast that we have simple nutrition tips on there. Grow Your Nutrition Business is a podcast for coaches and gym owners talking all about how to grow a nutrition business. I'm curious, what was your biggest takeaway? Type that in the chat. I'd love to see the, the thoughts that you guys have. What's one thing that you're going to do to start prioritizing nutrition? Um, I want to talk a little bit about the challenge intensive because I've mentioned it a couple of times. This is a on-demand or virtual live training that you have access to. It is approved for seven CrossFit CEUs. Um, it teaches you everything you need to plan, launch, and execute a challenge and gives you all of the professional framework and resources that we use minus the, the HSN app. It is all delivered in SugarWad. So habit tracking, daily videos, content in there to make it really easy for you to deliver a professional nutrition coaching program. Even the meeting templates are all ready to go. Super easy for you to go through a training, learn how to do it, and then actually deliver this nutrition coaching program. So what's included, those professional videos, uh, habit tracking is in there, the leaderboard, meal ideas, healthy tips, all of the things. I'm going to put the link in the chat um, so you guys can get information about that. But we do have a, a special promo for you guys um, today. If you are a gym owner and you want to do the challenge intensive, we are hosting the next challenge intensive we are hosting is on July 16th. It is to help you launch a fall challenge. Remember, we recommend marketing your challenge six weeks out. So if you are in our challenge intensive virtually on July 16th, which you can pop in and out or technically watch it uh, on demand, but we do recommend coming in person so that you can ask questions virtually uh, through Zoom. It's super helpful. Use the code SugarWad and you can actually get two um, subscriptions, one for an owner and one for a coach. I also want to mention that we have a live event in Nashville every year that is um, April 3rd through the 5th, 2025. So make sure that you check that out. It's called the Gym Accelerator Summit. I'm going to go in and answer some questions. Um, all right. How do we pick a winner for the challenge? This is a really good question. So one, I would recommend picking, picking weekly winners, not a huge winner at the end. Uh, we pick weekly winners based on the leaderboard. So how consistent are they? We want to reward people that are being consistent in conjunction with people who are engaging in the group feature. So um, if you're doing a group feature in the Facebook group or however you are doing the group communication, some people use WhatsApp, um, group communication. We want people encouraging each other, sharing healthy recipes, and bringing that community together. School, S-K-O-L, is another like group community feature that you could use too um, if you didn't want to use Facebook. But I would recommend picking weekly winners based on Six, consistency with habits as well as um, the engagement that they are doing in however you're communicating with people. Next question is, do we go through SugarWad to sign up for the challenge intensive? So you're actually going to sign up for 
it all goes back to this page, um, the challenge intensive, and then you're going to get access to the sugar wad challenge once you go through the training. So the way the process works is you go through the training either on demand or our virtual one July 16th. You're going to have a mentoring call to help you solidify your plan and make sure you're set up for success. And then we will get you access to the challenge on the and set it up for the date that you plan on launching your nutrition challenge. Cool. Um, next question, physically present, um, have a physical sign up board to make sure that we are getting signups for the challenge. That is good. There is a, uh, someone asked, will you be able to download um, some of these slides? So there is a workbook. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat. If you didn't have a chance to download the workbook, go ahead and do that. It is in the chat as well. Yes, and we will send out, um, Sarah here, <laughs> um, we will send out the recording as well, so you all will receive that, as well as a lot of these resources that Nicole has mentioned, and make sure you guys have a way to register for all these fun events. And then I think there's one more up above. Um, someone asked, how much does this need to come from owners? Could a coach launch that kind of challenge as well? Yeah, that's a really great question. So as an owner, you're the leader of your tribe. I do not believe that you have to be the one doing all the meetings in the day to day, but there is a role for you, not just for a challenge for individual coaching too, to know what's happening, know what to expect, ex you know, set the standard, train the staff, the momentum that you and have the coach have is going to set the, the momentum for the rest of the staff and ultimately your member signing up for it. So do you need to do everything? No, but that's one of the reasons why this promo has owners and coaches both doing the training so that you know what to expect and you can support the coach, but doesn't necessarily mean that you're doing uh, the individual meetings. You both can get the seven CrossFit CEUs that, that it includes too. Um, sometimes owners and coaches will split, like maybe the owner takes a few people and then the coach takes the bulk. When you have multiple coaches doing a nutrition challenge, they should be paid on the list that they are working with. So if I, Sarah and I are both nutrition coaches and we're taking clients, I'm going to bill for the people that are assigned to me. Sarah's going to bill for the people that are assigned to her. And my responsibilities for the people that are assigned to me is number one, I'm doing their initial meeting, their final meeting. I'm checking in with them once. And then we're, Sarah and I are, are collaborating in the group feature and going back and forth to support the group as a whole. So we're not doing like two separate groups for Sarah's group versus my group. Cool. The sugar wad um, code allows us to know, oh, okay, you are going to actually get two access points to this training, one for you and one for a coach. So you're not getting a technically a discount. You just need to enroll once and then we give you a second access point on our end. Great question. Um, last question. I thought I saw one about challenges. One thing we didn't talk about is who makes a good nutrition coach, which I think is really important. Um, you want someone that's in alignment with your nutrition philosophy. So we talked about nutrition philosophy at the very beginning. At Healthy Steps Nutrition, we focus on a habit-based approach using a holistic framework. We have three core principles, whole foods first, balance of macronutrients, and limiting the amount of ultra-processed food and added sugar. I'm not going to hire a nutrition coach that is strict keto or some Thing, someone that's pushing a multi-level marketing supplement. That's not who I'm going to hire as my nutrition coach. I need someone that's in alignment with my nutrition philosophy that walks the walk. I need someone that has good follow through. I don't want to be micromanaging my nutrition coaches. I need to know that if we talk about what the expectations are, they're going to execute and I'll check in, do some quality assurance, but I'm not going to be right behind them doing every step. I might as well just do it if that's the point. Uh, and the other thing that you want to think about that many coaches or owners don't think about is the soft skills. So nutrition coaching is often not about nutrition coaching. It's about all the other things that people use food for, how they're managing stress or support system, the dynamics at home, the, all the crazy stuff that's going on in their lives. And people need to feel comfortable opening up to that coach. So, and they want to, you want clients to be excited to come back for another follow-up visit. That's how you get a good length of engagement. And I don't just mean clients staying around so they're paying you longer. I know 
that if clients are sticking around with our nutrition program longer, we have a, a bigger impact in their life and a better ability to help them prevent and reverse chronic disease and create a solid foundation of healthy habits. And do they need to stay with us forever? No, of course not. But I know using a holistic framework that there's always something we can work on and keep them accountable and help them through because it's not always just about nutrition. It might be managing stress or helping them create a plan because they're traveling a bunch this month or whatever the case may be. So you need someone that that has those good stop skills. A, a, a way to think about it is if you were to go to coffee, if I were to take Sarah out to coffee and we sat down and during that cup of coffee, she was really a light, you know, like just a positive person. And I felt super comfortable opening up and I left that cup of coffee feeling like, man, I can't wait to have another cup of coffee with her. That would be who I would want to have my, um, be my nutrition coach. If I left feeling like, man, that was really draining. That's how your clients are going to feel. And that's not going to have a good length of engagement. And ultimately you're not going to be able to, to have the greatest impact in their life. Okay. Um, after the training, is there a monthly fee to keep up the app? So sugar wad, you're paying sugar wad for sugar wad. This challenge that we built out in challenge in sugar wad is just for the challenge. It's a standalone training. The HSN mentoring program has a separate app for ongoing coaching. And if you're interested in like the full thing that we offer with mentoring to do individual coaching, and you want that turnkey solution beyond just a challenge, then I would recommend booking a free call here so that we can chat. Um, the challenge, the sugar wad challenge is a great way to kickstart a program, uh, get your feet wet. It's a simple standalone training that we built out to launch a challenge. The mentoring pro program is the turnkey solution to have everything you need to um, build, launch and execute and scale a nutrition coaching program, not just for a challenge, but beyond a challenge. Uh, if you end up doing the challenge intensive and you decide you want to move to mentoring, we do credit you uh, the challenge intensive over to mentoring. Cool. Great question. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nicole. Does anyone have any last minute questions? We can always connect you with Nicole. And as I said, we'll send out resources in the recording and make sure you have all of her information. But this was so enlightening on so many different levels from an individual to a coach to an owner. So thank you, Nicole. Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you guys for joining. Um, yeah. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, connect with me on social, and uh, I hope to see you guys in the challenge intensive. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys.